I suppose you could say this is a special painting, although at the same time probably quite typical of quite a few of the things I've done in the past. Um, it's a very familiar scene to me, but it's one that's developed its own identity over the years. Uh, that happens when you paint things. The, the paintings themselves influence the way you see the places, and they take on a kind of um, uh, a charmed... They, they fire themselves in, the, in your own imagination, the more you paint them. Um, this is the Forest of Dean in southwest of England, where my parents lived. My mum's still alive. My dad died back in, 90, in 2000. And um, there's a lot of things going on here. The size and the scale of the painting is very important. When you do a painting this size, the sheer space that you've got to cover with paint means that you, you live your life for quite a long period of time inside the picture frame. And, uh, and that gives it something that you can't achieve on a smaller scale. To me, something happens when, 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 the, when the sun comes and goes, as it does often in this part of England, with this type of sky, you have clouds that are, are in continuing mo continual motion and they can sometimes block the sun. That generates an excitement when the sun actually does come out, which you hope to get into your painting. That moment of, um, yeah, excitement, I think is the right word, where suddenly, the back of this jacket is lit up by a, a power that's beyond you or me or anybody else. And that's continually moving and changing. That creates a dynamism, which together with the, hopefully the, the, the feeling of the breezy, the airiness of the picture with the grass and the trees and the air. This is all about air, really, this picture. Air and light. And I think, you know, on reflection, and this is probably a, some kind of... Um, reflection that's taken course during the painting process or on completion of the painting. I like to think that the, the chair is, with this light coming through it, has some kind of spiritual quality. Now I'm going to temper two uh, pigments which I've mixed with water or attempted to mix with water. I've got burnt umber here which readily mixes with water and becomes a, a, a coherent type of paste, which isn't paint at this point. And I've got a, an unpronounceable green pigment, which I call philharmonic green, um, which doesn't readily adhere to water. As you can see, the particles are, are actually s too small to adhere with the water. But once I start to add the egg, you'll see what happens. In the case of the green, we start to get a... a it's a very transparent pigment, we start to get this uh, nice mixture here. In the case of the, the uh, burnt umber, you can see also see a dis different straight away in the way the, the paint hangs together as, a, as an evenly mixed, it's not m sort of clumping together. The wonderful thing about temper is its linearity. Um, what I mean by that is with the right mix of pigment and egg yolk, we have this fantastic feel of being able to, to draw these really long brush strokes. Now I'm working on porcelain here at the moment. This would be physically impossible to do with any other type of paint. Um, as you can see, I just, that's an untem the untempered bit. That wouldn't happen. There we see, see the difference between tempered color, tempered color and untempered color. That I was able to just take that straight off the plate. I wouldn't be able to do that with a tempered color. This linear thing that I'm talking about, this line can basically just go on forever. Um, which is one of the qualities of working temper. It, it, it adheres itself to, to drawing fluid lines. Um, and uh, how long would it take to dry, and then would it be waterproof? Well, it, it, it would depend on what you were painting on. This particular, you can see here now, this more or less dry, and this is porcelain, so we're talking about a surface that's basically totally unabsorbent, and you can see that it's already dried here. You know, the idea of sort of pushing paint around on the painting surface isn't, isn't actually something you can do successfully with tempera. Um, it's a bit more like drawing with a pencil, that every mark you make uh, stays there.